Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Parth Rati. I've secured an oil in the rank of 289 and 341. And in this video, we'll talk how to strategize NEET PG while working as an intern or as a bond or somewhere else, how to optimize your time, how to make the perfect strategy that, that could be best for you to increase your chances to crack NEET PG on your first attempt. And for this, we have a very special guest with us with AIR7 in her first attempt during her internship, Dr. Zui Nigutkar. Welcome, Dr. Zui. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So <laughs> while we were we were talking about this uh, this topic of cracking knee PG during your first and first attempt while working, um, I was initially trying to make a video, but then I thought it would be great if Dr. Zui can also come and give her, her valuable insights for say her journey, and uh, together hopefully we'll be able to make uh, good content that will be able that that you can find relatable to, and hopefully it can give the best output for you. So the format of the entire video would be, uh, I'll be asking a couple of the questions which I got from the students around in the Telegram group, uh, per se this topic, and one by one we'll go to the topic, one, one by one we'll go to the questions, and Dr. Zui will be commenting and giving her insights, and followed by I'll be giving, and then we'll be moving on to the next question. So let's just get started without wasting any time. Uh, question number one. How to make an overall six-month plan for NEET PG 2024? One, under the subheading of a macro plan, and then the micro plan, per se, focusing on individual subjects as well. Yeah. Uh, so, I actually, uh, I made, when I was making a video about this for my channel, about uh, how to study for NEET PG, so I think I put it up back in March or in the beginning of April. So, uh, assuming that the exam is going to happen probably in Jan 2024, so that's the like that's seven or like like you said six seven months which we are going to get. So uh, I think what everyone should be aiming for is at least two revisions and one first reading. Okay, so it's going to be one first reading, which is you reading one subject at a time with a lot of dedication and your entire attention uh, your entire attention on that single subject. Then that's the first revision which you are doing, which is slightly faster than your first reading. But uh, again, you are still taking time to uh, again get familiar with what you read earlier. And then there's your second revision in which it's going to be super fast and you don't have a lot of time to sit and dwell on sing every single thing, but you are still going through the entire content. And after this, 15 days before your exam, you are doing a rapid revision. That is, you are giving one day for each major subject and uh, one day for two minor subjects. So that is how you are rapidly going through uh, all these uh, notes which you've read over the last six months. And for this, this is the macro plan which you mentioned, like uh, what is, so the uh, first reading should last for like about uh, three to four months. So uh, assuming you started in April or you're starting uh, now, so I think till September would be a good time to, I'm not counting right now, but I just say till September generally, it would be a good time frame to finish your first reading. And what do I mean by first reading? So I'll uh, elaborate a little bit on that. So you, uh, I am assuming that people who are watching this video, like are probably in the same state as me, who have attended like lectures, maybe in their final year or in their pre-final year, and they have made notes or they are referring to some uh, platform and they are using printed notes of that platform, right? So I'm assuming that people have finished the part of watching videos. And they're not starting from scratch right now. You have a base, you have notes, you have your sources ready. You just have to get started with reading them. Okay, so that is your first reading where you are reading the notes and you're solving MCQs, right? So uh, my first reading used to comprise of, uh, comprise of this, like I used to read my notes and then I used to solve MCQs. Then I used to give one subject wise test. I would review that test and then move on and consider that subject done. No matter how confident I feel about it or how underconfident I feel about it, I'll finish that much and then I'll move on. So that way, I think people, so people are having their one source of notes. So suppose I did, for example, patho I did from dams and I started reading my patho notes and I finished them over a course of 20 days and every day the notes which I would finish reading, the next day I would solve the MCQs of the topic which I read the previous day. 
and then after i was done with my entire notes in this uh, in uh, this manner then i would give one subject wise test or i uh, initially i was giving p and d in dams and then i would move on so this is your first reading a lot of seniors told me that uh, usually we tend to be in such a hurry to get done with our first reading so we give ourselves a deadline and uh, we say ki 10 din mein nahi hua so i am leaving this and i'm moving ahead i don't care but i uh, one of my seniors he told me and he gave me really valuable advice that your first reading is extremely important it is your foundation it's your basis of understanding for that subject so even if you have to give like 3 4 days extra to finish that subject it is worth it to take those extra days and make sure that you are absolutely confident with this one subject so that when you are revising again you don't have any self doubts ki maine ye topic first reading ke time choda tha now i have to focus more on this or you don't uh, you know you don't uh, end up feeling under confident about that subject as a whole because you have finished it that well during your first reading and so this is your first reading and i will uh, explain a bit in detail about the mcqs later like how what exactly i did but so this is your first reading you are reading the notes the solving mcqs of whatever you read and you are giving one subject wise test and you are reviewing that and moving ahead so this is how the first reading should proceed and uh, initially i had planned to give only 10 to 15 days for major subjects so what are your major subjects they are your first year may say i think uh, biochem counts and nat then in second year um, pathopharma micro third year may none of the subjects count as uh, like major subjects and final year ke all subject except for sarpo right like uh, gynac obgy uh, peds search be medicine so these major subjects are more time consuming so you should aim to give at least 15 days for these if not more like if you can finish in lesser days like in 10 days then that's uh, like still fine I think 15 days से ज़्यादा नहीं देना चाहिए. I did some mistakes of giving like one month to pharma and then regretting it later on. So I would suggest you sit down and plan out uh, how many pages of the notes you need to read in one day for you to be done with the notes in this much amount of time. So that kind of quantitative planning is going to uh, help you predict how much time uh, reading is going to take you. it might not always be very accurate but at least you have a deadline in front of your eyes or you have a goal so you can try yes. and achieve that goal every single day and uh, like micro planning uh, i would say like you're saying subject for like each subject individually yeah right? so uh, what, what i meant to ask is macro planning will be the division of the 6 months so if you have 6 months yeah. you would suggest that divide at least the first 2 and a half to 3 months to give a very concise reading oh, yeah. about yeah. about your subjects go deep into that if it takes one or two extra days it's okay but don't overshoot beyond two days as well just complete that in the limited days in the three months that you have just complete the first reading and in the next three months you start with the revision cycles and then you complete at least two good revision thorough revision and the last 15 days ka last revision so that's the macro yeah. plan that is suggested micro yeah. plan coming to individual that. subjects yes ha we start planning in a retrograde manner like you assume that the exam is going to you take a sunday of uh, january 2024 and you assume ki exam ye time pe hoga 15 yeah. days before that yeah. that's your rapid revision one month before that that's your second revision one and half months before that or two months before that that's your first revision and three months before that is your first reading so yes. you go in yeah. a retrograde manner so that is going to help to plan out and uh, like i said micro planning is like subject wise you are just going to uh, read notes solve mcqs and give uh, subject wise test subject wise test and at the end also yeah and uh, also like uh, grand tests i don't know if it's there's a question like uh, age but i want to mention ki start giving grand tests right from the beginning uh, like if you are if you are like if you are using maro then maro gives out timely tests every two weeks so every test that you see you are going to try and solve it try not to skip any tests and just like baki padhai chalne to background mein tests dete hi rehna hai so those are like independent factors going ahead you have to do both of those simultaneously yeah. yes so uh, supposedly this is this is the case scenario for people who have done at least one reading in the third minor or third major 
now for few subjects in case uh, for few subjects somebody has not prepared from third minor third major and they have less than 6 months for the need so would you suggest ri- rather right now to go into the main notes and go into the main videos or what alternative uh, is what we students should opt for yeah so uh, a lot of people are asking me that they have not done certain second year subjects certain first year subjects and now it's going to be too time consuming for them to watch the videos again from scratch so obviously one thing is that you either just uh, rely completely on printed notes and start reading printed notes from scratch this is what i did for certain subjects like micro biochemistry pharmacology i had not watched lectures yeah. and i did not have handmade notes So because they are factual is, yes yeah so it, it doesn't require concept building so it can actually directly go to the notes that's how yes yeah like i trusted ki uh, uh, the studying which i had done in second year first year mm-hmm. like from yes. standard textbook yeah. i was like ha conceptually i know things i just need to like freshen them up a bit so i was yes. fine with reading printed notes from some other source or something like that but in case you are not feeling confident enough to go ahead without watching the videos or you are not feeling confident to um, you know directly use a like a vast amount of printed notes like for example marrow ke normal printed notes are very vast so some people want to use the revision notes so that is also fine the revision videos or the revision notes if you are using them i will just say if you are doing that make sure you are giving twice the amount of uh, emphasis to pyq topics and to solving pyqs so you are doing the revision notes along with that you are giving so much stress to pyqs that you will not have any fear that you have missed out important things you know ki yes. pyqs mein jo bhi cover karna tha has been covered and whatever extra info you got in the revision notes that's just a bonus so you are not missing out on anything important yeah, that is exactly like even if it's okay like uh, because a lot of people get really worried uh, since they didn't do the main notes or main videos what to do sir i am exactly in the spot now should i go for this should i not go for this will i be able to retain a ready made note is what even i try to say like go with the previous year topic and previous year questions as the guideline and uh, if you do the rr and if you do the previous year question along with the solution and you give an xwt more than 90% of the subject will get covered and i think that is sufficient enough for you to get started and move on because in the journey while you are doing definitely you will grab few other pointers while in the journey as well so that will add up to 95% and 90 to 95% har subject mein la rahe to bahut ho gaya yaar i mean kitna kitna hi chahiye sabko saw thodi na hona yes you are not yeah. going to remember every single thing you read from the big chunky vast notes anyway so if you are remembering the short stuff you are reading then that's just as good as reading the main notes yeah yes uh one other question was uh, did you utilize first aid and how to go utilize first aid in the last 6 months should i go for it should i not go for it and if i go how to utilize and optimize the time yeah so i unfortunately i am not the right person for this because i did not use first aid i already had very solid notes for first year second year subject like some of them from like attending dams and all so uh, and uh, i was a bit skeptical about using first aid because i did not hear many people talking about it so i did not refer to first aid but there are many people in my batch who have done like exceptionally well in the exam and they used first aid religiously like one of my friends uh, he got a really good rank and he kept saying ki first aid se mcqs utha ke waise ke waise aate hain exactly especially in ini city they they really yeah. pick every damn line of ini of the first aid yes yeah so i i would suggest that anybody who wants to use first aid or who feels like they don't already have good enough sources for the pre clinical subjects then they should definitely check first aid out because is is just that you pick a source and just trust it like if you are using first aid then trust it and stick to it throughout your preparation then you later on as long as you don't have any self doubts and you are happy with the source you've chosen it's going to be fine so i think yes. whoever is feeling like they want to use first aid or if there are some people who are thinking of usmle and they used first aid for some time now they have shifted to neat pg you can still uh, refer to first aid for your pre clinicals it's going to be only beneficial there is yes. harm even for particular subjects like uh, biochem microbiology and uh, uh, i think psm general psm epidemiology screening 
these things are given beautifully in first study so if you have not have any strong notes if you don't have and pharma pharma pharmacology ke tables and how clinically very cl- classic classification of the drugs their mechanism of action and their side effects literally they have given everything in table so it's it's a very good place if you ha- don't have your own set of notes till now and only if you can revise this at least four times more then only pick otherwise don't pick and don't do blunder because uh, it's a very concise book you will have to revise it a lot of times to keep it everything on your check because it's it like every line is a very strong potential question so you will need a lot of revision of it only if you able to give that much of time and for these subjects specifically then only i would suggest go otherwise just don't go into that fomo uh, trust your source just test your source source if you want to just given a sgwt or a tnd you'll come to know is your source and your preparation and your hold on that subject is strong or not and accordingly if you think that it is extremely poor or pathetic and you can't work on it then you can switch for first and otherwise i would just just stick to your source yeah. yes so uh, next question comes uh, giving analyzing frequencies of grant tests let's just elaborate a little bit on it you did comment on it previously but let's just talk in more detail hmm. uh, so like i said uh, i use only marrow for my grant test and uh, so that i would not have to worry about the frequency myself i would just stick to the schedule that marrow was following uh, like they were putting out tests every wednesday every second wednesday so like the test would go like on wednesday it would stay live till monday morning so every every week sunday i would used to think ki ha we like every other sunday i used to do grand tests and the good thing of giving it on sunday is ki monday ko turant result aa jata hai so monday i would sit and revise the whole grand test and initially this was the frequency i was following up to like december then in january like that is two months before the exam i started giving one grand test every week and in february i started giving two grand tests every week and so what like, would you suggest people, in the in the in the first three months what what should be the frequency of the students like if they're doing the first reading in the first three months only two yeah twice uh, like one grand test in two weeks so every 14 okay. days right and uh, like i was like you are done ha huh? once you're done with your first reading now and once you're starting your first revision i think you can start giving one test every week because uh, what you are doing is you are exercising your the part of your brain which was reading the other subjects also so yes. while you are revising one subject you get so focused on it that you might end up forgetting some of the other subjects so to prevent that from happening you are solving the grand so it's really good mcq practice like if you are solving one grand test and you are reviewing it you have essentially practiced 200 mcqs and like yeah. that is a lot alag se if you sit down to solve mcqs you might not end up solving that much so it's really good mcq practice also but like i just want to say ki if you're giving grand tests make sure you're reviewing them like don't be like ki main grand test de diya i'm done now i'm going to chill no like even if you get a good score you get a better rank than what you had expected in the test make sure to review it and initially to try and review all 200 mcqs like uh, i had my grand test review notebook and i would write down everything that was new to me i would write down uh, wherever i went wrong i would write down what why my logic was wrong what the actual logic is and uh, wherever i guessed certain answers correctly like although it's correct i guessed it so mm-hmm. what what was i thinking like what was yes. my process of yeah. thought behind it and what is the actual thought process so don't just sit and copy the explanation from the app or from the website write as it is into your notebook Uh, try to make it an active learning process so that it's like it's um, easier for you to memorize things or you are going to remember things better by doing this and once you have it written somewhere the next time you go through it it's going to like be uh, you're going to uh, it's going to click faster and yes. that's i think it's going to be easy to remember it like till the exam also so how did you categorize like if the mistakes that you made in grand test definitely it was like a su- sufficient amount previously in the early part of the prep slowly slowly it got little decreasing but how did you categorize like this mistake so how to work on individual aspects of the grand test how did you do that uh, so uh, initially i would uh, i used to classify mistakes like uh, silly mistakes factual mistakes and conceptual mistakes so and then stuff which i just did not know so like no, no, no. Uh, initially ek pop up aa gaya Can you just start again on this question? I'll ask again. You just start on this again. 
एक पॉपअप आ गया बीच में तो गो सो definitely you mentioned about giving the grant test in the frequency like but the analyzing you were saying so how did you cat like what people generally ask is how to categorize and work on the grant test how to make sure that you're working on your mistakes efficiently and not just know that this is the mistake but how to work about it and to not repeat it in the next grant test so what would you suggest it will be the advice for the students so i uh, so initially suppose uh, i'm at a stage like imagine i'm at a stage where i had only done one subject but and then i started giving grant tests at this point right so there are a lot of subjects which i have not read so for one would be the mistakes which i made because i did not know like i have not done these subjects so i have made these mistakes that will eventually gradually go on reducing as you do more and more subjects then the second is factual mistakes from the stuff i have already read so i have read this like i have read that this isc marker is for this and this so i have read it but i still mess, messed it up so that is another like that means i have to make charts make notes like i have to uh, do some active learning on my part to remember those facts better the third is conceptual mistake like i legit strongly believed that the answer i marked was right <laughs> because my concept was only wrong so yeah, yeah so that was my like entirely wrong thought process that i need to change so that's conceptual mistakes and last is silly mistakes which i made a lot like you did not read the except you did not read the uh, all are correct but like those kind of mistakes which you make till the end like there is no there is no way out of it you keep making but you need more practice end. with more practice you will be able to decrease your silly mistakes ha uh, you reduce those mistakes and initially i uh, used this concept of categorizing my mistakes a lot but uh, later on it was difficult to give so much time and like you know yes. keep categorizing so later on i just reviewed only my uh, the mcqs which i got wrong and the ones which i guessed correctly because everything else i assume ki maine sahi kiya hai now sahi hai to mera sahi hai logic so exactly. instead of going to through all 200 mcqs i was saving yeah. on time by doing this yes maro yes. has that option ki i'm guessing the answer so guessing correctly that means स्टार्टिंग So yeah. Next question comes: uh, How to approach on integrating subjects, especially medicine, physio, patho, pharma? Uh, so uh, I, I had heard that you should be studying in a way where you are doing one system entirely from all the subjects. Like if you are doing CVS, you are doing it from physio, you are doing it from pharma, you are doing it from medicine. And although I understand that, I, I like. Logically, it makes a lot of sense to me that that this is how you should be studying. I personally did not study in this manner because simply for the sake of convenience. Like I like to get done with. I would like to get done with one subject and then not worry about it and then move on to another subject and then like not have things pending. That was my thing. I would hate it when things would be like, things would be still left and in my mind it keeps on going. Yeah, I have to do this. but if you are someone who can multitask properly if you are someone who enjoys if you have if you cannot uh, read one subject for a very long time without getting bored and you need the variety you need to uh, keep changing things up to feel interested in the studies so i think this is how you should go for it like find the clinical subjects which share system wise uh, studies like so if you say you did cardiac cycle then in medicine you read why like the cardiac failure ka thing then you see heart failure drugs from pharmacology then you see whatever pathogenic conditions are there with heart failure from uh, pathology so if you can study in this way without getting distracted or you know without feeling like you are lose missing out on something uh, if you enjoy this kind of studying it's definitely going to be helpful for you but i personally found that even though i read one subject at a time 
eventually when i started my revision i was able to make all these connections even like in an integrated manner even without having done all this separately yes. because once you are done with reading everything once then when you are revising it all starts making sense in your head yes so either way is fine yeah yes it become a, it can become a task actually to go through multiple notes if you have made notes only into that segregated section like physiology cardiology is different patho cardiology is different notes this is different to it becomes a task actually to sit down with four notes and to compare what i had done actually was to have a systemized notes only so it actually helped me a lot to just go through the cardiology and nephrology like that so it it uh, like i didn't have nephrology or cardiology physio notes alag se it was all within the same so that integrated approach i tried initially only while making the notes so only if you do that i think it helps a lot not otherwise if you do as she said uh, after first reading almost everything you will be in touch with so aisa itna significant impact tabhi nahi hoga and if you have a basics and cleared in your final year and pre final year definitely it won't be a big task for you to integrate and learn um, so it's up, up to you if you are in the early stage you can try to make an integrated notes but it's okay even if you are not made don't cry or like you know get out of the fear of it uh, definitely things can fall into place you just need to you be more mindful in your preparation